going down with the spoon straight down. Hello everyone, I'm Shirley Satterfield. I've grown up in Princeton, I went to school in Princeton, educated here, uh, fourth of six generations in Princeton. I am the historian of the African American community. I also started an organization called the Witherspoon Jackson Historical and Cultural Society to research, to share, to study the history, the rich history of African Americans in Princeton. About 1920s, there were a couple who came from Hillsboro, North Carolina, William and Mary Moore. They came as poor couples, but Mr. Moore had a vision and he wanted to start a business. We could say he was one of the first African American entrepreneurs. He started businesses up close to Nassau Street on Witherspoon Street, places where African Americans couldn't even shop. And then he came here to this location on Spring Street. Spring Street before then was really a spring. There really was water here. But these two buildings that I'm sitting next to are buildings where he started his businesses. On the side where I am is where he had his clothing store. William Moore Clothing Store. On the other side, he had an antique furniture store. And it said that the students from Princeton University, who were all male at that time, came to his shop to sell their clothes so that they could have money to go to New York or wherever they wished. On the other side, his furniture store, he sold wonderful antiques and some of the furniture is said to have been in the office of Woodrow Wilson, who was then the president of Princeton University. And one of the antique desks was so large that they had a hard time getting it in his office. But Mr. Moore thrived here, not only these two buildings that I'm in front of, but also other places on Nassau Street and Witherspoon Street where he had wonderful thriving businesses. Many of the white residents of Princeton came to shop and to get some of the antiques and clothing. They called him Sport and they also called him King Midas because they said everything that he touched turned to gold. Now when he sold the building, the side that I'm sitting on became Mr. Rex Gorley's shop and there will be someone who will be talking about Mr. Gorley when he was asked to come here by Group Arts in 1947. Before then he had studied in Berlin, he had studied in Paris, he had studied in Copenhagen and at first he was reluctant to come to Princeton but thank goodness he came here so that we would know how rich African Americans are in business, in arts, in all areas. So when he sold the building, Mr. Gorley had his art studio here, and then he moved it to 14, the building next, because it was so, uh, he had so many clients and he did so much as far as art. And someone will talk to you about Mr. Rex Gorley, who I knew and who I was so glad to meet and to show some of his art and to know that he was one of our noted African Americans who started displaying arts, had art exhibits at Palmer Square. So I will turn this over to those who will talk more about Mr. Rex Gorley. I'm Judy Brodsky and I'm the co-curator of the exhibition at the Arts Council of Princeton titled Retrieving the Life and Art of James Wilson Edwards and a circle of black artists, including Rex Gorley, Huey Lee Smith, Selma Burke, and Wendell Brooks. Uh, these artists uh, lived and worked uh, in Princeton during the last decades of the 20th century and were important figures in the community. 
How they got to Princeton is a really interesting story, and it starts on Spring Street. Spring Street, as you've already heard, was a street of uh, small shops, with, uh, some with black owners, some with Jewish owners, some with Italian owners. And in 1947, it became a center for the arts. I am Ronald Ponder, co-curator, along with Judith Brodsky of the art exhibition, The Life and Art of James Wilson Edwards and a Circle of Black Artists. In 1947, the newly formed Princeton Arts Group hired black artist Rex Gorley to be its executive director. The mission of the Princeton Arts Group, founded by a diverse group of local citizens, was to bring the arts to Princeton and serve, quote, every race, color, or creed as a challenge to segregation and racial inequality and in response to calls for desegregation. A new constitution was voted in the state of New Jersey that mandated the integration of the schools in New Jersey. Amazingly enough, up until that point, New Jersey's schools were still segregated, uh, including the schools in Princeton. And these citizens were aware of this constitutional amendment, and they were also aware of the discrimination uh, that was rampant still. It was still the period of segregation in the United States, and they wanted to bring the black and white communities in Princeton together. They felt that the arts were a way to do that. The arts were loved by everyone. Everyone could participate in the arts, and the issues of race and ethnicity, and for that matter, gender, were certainly considerations that disappeared as people became artists, uh, either painting or doing other kinds of arts. You have to remember that at this period, there were no art classes in the schools. So children who wanted to study in the arts um, had no place to go until Princeton Group Arts was established. The PGA offered all types of art classes for all ages such as painting, ceramics, sculpture, printmaking, dance, and choral music. The programming included concerts, art exhibits, and an annual film festival. The PGA was the only place in Princeton where anyone could take art classes without enrolling in a college or university. So, Princeton Group Arts thrived for approximately seven years. But unfortunately, there wasn't enough financial support to sustain it, possibly because there were people in Princeton who felt that Princeton wasn't ready for an integrated um, organization like this, but also probably more for pragmatic reasons, primarily because they wanted to make it accessible to all members of the community. The fees they charged were very low. The limited space at the center it's a model of mostly free or inexpensive classes for everyone, and racial attitudes contributed to the end of the PGA. Initially, the local YMCA took on many of its classes as the PGA wound down. After seven years as director, Rex Gorley had become an integral part of the Princeton area community. His belief that the arts was for everyone led him to found the studio on the canal. Gorley bought a property on the corner of Alexander Street and the canal that runs through Princeton, and with the help of friends, he constructed a building with studios for teaching and the performing and visual arts. He called it Studio on the Canal. And it was very successful and continued to be a center for children to take art classes and also for adults. He also um, mounted exhibitions on a regular basis. Uh, his instructors, who were both white and black, uh, participated in these exhibitions, as did talented members of the community, like Margot Einstein, Albert Einstein's stepdaughter, who lived in Princeton and was a constant exhibitor uh, at the ex in the exhibitions at the studio on the canal. One of the other things that Rex Gorley did was to bring in uh, African-American artists to teach at Studio on the Canal. For instance, Huey Lee Smith, 
had just moved to New York. At that point, he was very successful in his art career, but an artist never has a steady income and looks to teaching as an opportunity for sustaining himself or herself. And so Huey Lee Smith came down to teach in Princeton and became a very important member of the Princeton cultural community. James Wilson Edwards moved to Princeton because he and his wife, Verena, had read about Princeton community housing, which was a real estate development intended to provide integrated housing for black and white home uh, buyers. And Princeton became known as a place that would be comfortable for black families. Rex, Huey, and James were more than contemporary artists. They became great, mutually supportive friends with similar views on art, community, and the power of art for social progress. These artists that Rex Gorley brought were participants in exhibitions all through central New Jersey and became very well known. They made enormous contributions to uh, the Princeton and wider community around Princeton. However, their participation in Princeton has been largely forgotten until now. And this exhibition, Retrieving the Life and Art of James Wilson Edwards in a Circle of Black Artists at the Arts Council, restores their place in Princeton history, particularly in the history of Princeton's African-American community, adding to the wonderful work of uh, women uh, like Shirley Satterfield. Okay, this is the corner of Lytle and Witherspoon Streets. And the reason um, we had a lot of stores in our community because we were not welcome to stores on Nassau Street. So almost every house was a, a restaurant or a candy store or a beauty parlor.